Hey authors, Sarah here. Thank you very much for joining me today. I am going to be doing a very quick session today in the hopes that I will be able to kind of showcase to you my thought process when it comes to creating a design on the fly. Um, a lot of my design time in Canva is something that I actually come to as um, it, the, you know, the idea comes to my head while I'm working or perhaps at the end of a day, you know, I've I finished writing, I'm still kind of marinating my time with my characters, and I have an idea for a design of how I can share that on through a digital graphic. Um, so, uh, you know, I do spend some time in Canva every morning kind of creating content and, um, you know, getting myself set up for the day. But there are some sessions where I will be like just inspired uh, to share something and want to design a graphic. And today my inspiration really comes from uh, all of the discussions that we've had about talking about your author brand, where, you know, making sure that you're using the same colors, um, the same type of uh, visuals when you're designing so that you have a very uniform um, and a platform or a profile that really speaks to who you are. Um, and the reason why I need to actually um, do a little touch up today because I have been having such a blast on Instagram posting reels using clips from The Office TV show. Um, making jokes about how difficult it is for me to write this book that I'm writing right now. Uh, so my Instagram profile grid is filled with pictures of my face looking kind of mad in front of a computer. Um, and that's not necessarily the vibe I want people to see when they first come to my page. Like, yes, I want them to enjoy the funny videos, but I also want them to like see my books, see the bright colors that I love, and kind of the cheerful, bubbly nature of my profile page. So what I'm doing today is I'm kind of recentering my Instagram profile grid um, to bring some back some color, uh, bring back some, you know, pop of uh, some brightness, and to bring some happiness back, because right now it's just like frown pictures of me frowning, um, trying to figure out what to write. So for today, I'm going to be creating a graphic about my Glenmire Wim Mysteries, which it ties in with the work that I've been doing because I'm currently writing book three in the series. So what I want to do is just create a graphic that um, you know really speaks to both my author brand as well as the series brand and kind of tie everything back together to refocus my profile. Um, you'll also notice that there's a big countdown um, happening in the corner of the Canva window right now. Will you create the 15th billion design. Um, I would love to do that, but I don't think we're going to reach that number today. Uh, but I am going to start creating a post from scratch. Normally, when you've joined me before, I'm always creating things in existing projects um, because I'm able to pull the colors, the fonts, um, the styles that are used in the same project. Um, but because today is really just about a light uh, kind of spur of the moment design, um, I'm going to start from scratch. And because this is specifically for Instagram, I'm just going right into my Instagram post. Um, to start off, because I am creating something for my Glenmire Wim Mysteries, I am going to use, uh, let's see if there's any templates that have candle themes in them, because that goes a long way for my series, which is about a candle maker. Um, ooh, I don't know if I want to use a template for National Prayer Day. That seems disrespectful to then convert into my own usage, uh, but I really do love those candles that are being used. We'll see. Let's see if they're, they pop up anywhere else. But you can see about like how you can repurpose practically any template to make it work for you and your brand. Um, ooh, perfect. This is where we're starting. Um, this is a nice, a beautiful little saying there. Which, if I was, I honestly could just like post this and pr pretty much be okay with this representing me and my book series. I might take my. 
I might take the background and like change it into a different, um, change it into something different, but you know what? I'm actually, I do like this a lot, but that's not what I'm here specifically to do today. Um, so I'm just gonna double the page so I can kind of save it in the back of my mind. And then I'm gonna start deleting the elements that I know that I'm not gonna use. Um, I love these candles, I'm keeping them. You know me, I love to have like things propping up in the corner to support the image. Um, so I've got these cute little candles here. And then I'm gonna go right into my book covers and pop in both my books for this particular series and I'm gonna go with just using the flat images and we're gonna use shadow to make them more um, dimensional um, I do have the let's see here in the Glenn Meyer Wim mysteries I have the oops, that's wrong let's see have a lot of folders. I do have these 3D images that I could be using, um, but I think for today, I am just going to utilize the features of Canva to really help me make this pop as much as possible. And I'm gonna do that by relying on their shadow feature to give dimension to these two images here, these two book covers. So right away, I know that I wanna make some adjustments. I wanna make this angle more distinct. I want the transparency. I think I want, let's make it dark purple. Eh, might actually make it even darker purple from here. Perfect. And then let's see, not the blur. I actually, I think I want it less blurry. There. All right, so I just need to remember Four, forty-seven, and three, because I want the same type of style on my secondary cover. And you can't on this one. I wouldn't be able to. Well, actually, let's see. Let's use that paintbrush and see. Nope, it doesn't work that way. So we're going to go back to the shadow. I have already forgotten what the numbers are. I believe it was four, forty-seven and three, and then switching it to that dark, very dark purple. And applying it. And I can already see that I'm pretty much going to shrink, need to shrink these candles just a little bit to give me some more operating room here. Let's bring everything in. Maybe I'll put the candles. I like how these are singular elements. I'm gonna actually double. I'm gonna make this like a mirror image. And you can, you'll notice that these, I can adjust the colors on them. I am going to come in and let's see, use some colors from the books themselves. Uh, Let's see. You know what? Actually, I kind of just really like these pastel-y blue colors that they have. I might keep them for now. Let's see what happens to the back. Let's bring everything down and make this a little bit bigger. All right, perfect. So I've got these nice candles here to support my images. I'm gonna bring the covers down because I want to have a little caption at the top to kind of entice people like, what am I, you know, what am I saying about these books that I can, that will be appealing? So I'm gonna come in here. I've already got my um, brand set for my Glenn Meyer Wim Mysteries. So let's do, Just do a cute, quick phrase. Brighten up your bookshelf with, actually, I'm not even gonna do with, just brighten up your bookshelf. Everybody, 
everybody could use a little brightness right now. Brighten up your bookshelf. Gonna again make these candles a little smaller so that I can then oops, drag my books down a little bit more. Give that text bigger. And then let us change the color of the text. Go to the effects here. Let's see that, you know I love neon. Brighten up your bookshelf. Perfect. Now I need to play around with my background. I'm gonna come here, light pink. I think the light pink supports it really nicely. And I almost wanna flip this. And have the colors cascade down the page. And we're going to readjust, we're going to go to this splice. And the reason why I use splice is because it allows me to make my text bolder without having the bold option. And the reason why I don't, there are some texts that don't allow for fonts that don't allow for you to make them bold. Um, so this is a little workaround that I have to make them, make those lines thicker. Um, looking at this though, I think I'm going to need to do a little, something different with the color. Um, I don't think it's the right purple. We need it to be a, there we go. And Let's do, ooh, I love it. I love some tilt action here. There we go. Now, were they both tilted the same? I like how this one is tilted. Nine, I think this was an eight. Nine, okay. Then I'm just moving it around the page to get the alignment correct. There we go. Perfect. Brighten up your bookshelf. You can candle the truth, too much to candle. And I'm making a game time decision here. I'm actually gonna remove that extra candle that I added, bring this back, oops, I'm going to have to position this forward because what I'm going to add in here, guys, is a call to action regarding that folks can read this on Kindle Unlimited. So go back to my text, read for free on, actually I'm going to have the text be different. And um, when you're using Kindle Unlimited, um, Amazon has some very specific rules about how their terms and logos and everything can look. So I try to make them appear as, you know, at, on brand as possible. Um, so I've got Kindle Unlimited, read for free. I think I'm actually, oops, gonna change the font here again. Um, let's go back and take a look at my fonts here. I want something cute enough, but I also want it to be very, like, uh, very clear what it's saying. So not too loopy. That's actually pretty good. I use this for a lot of my, I, I'll use this one. I do tend to use this particular font for a lot of my uh, whim related content. So I will do that here. Then I'm aligning it so that they are flush with one another.
and oh, maybe bear with. That's whoops. This is how we're doing it. We're going to have candles framing everything. So then I'm going to go ahead and copy paste these. I am going to switch it around so it's like they are mirror images of one another. I think that's really nice. They came together really in a really great way. Let's bring these closer now. And now I don't know if the tilting works. There's a lot of trial and error when you're working on, on something like this, especially when I'm just kind of like doing this on the fly, having given it too much thought about what I want. But once you have all your elements brought together, that's when you can really work on making them the best that you can. All right. And then last but not least, I think, let's make this double, two lines instead of one. And because I'm going to even make another game time decision here, ooh, that does not look good. <laughs> that game time decision was not good. Um, I'm trying to get something that really fits, that ties well with what's happening at the bottom. Because um, I'm not sold on, and you can see like trial and error when it comes to font selection. Let's see, I might have to get rid of my, ooh, that's nice, much nicer. Brighten up your bookshelf. And then last but not least, what we need is a star. And I'm actually going to bring in a star from my, I think I have one on my bookmark. I've been using these a lot lately and what I really need to do is save them. Actually, um, I can't do that from within here. I need to save this particular element on uh, so that I can re reference it more frequently because I want to be able to use that, this like star option. We're gonna bring in some orange, bring in some bright yellow and bring in some deeper yellow. Actually, I might do purples for this. There we go. The yellow kind of faded too much on that. I think the sparkles add a little bit of magic to the design and that's what I want. Because there's a little bit of magic to the Glenmire Wind Mysteries. Then this is just a lot of me like deciding where the where it's best to have these additional stars. I think this one needs to be a little less bright. Put 
one more here. And then I think this is I think I achieved what I wanted. I'm going to do a quick serve a quick look at my background options cuz I really didn't give much um well, That's kind of fun, but I didn't really like dive too much into those background options once I found that first one. Oh, this rose one is pretty. Now, if this was a candle, I would definitely, definitely use it because it would fit like totally in with what I'm, what I'm going for. Um, light pink. Maybe I should just type light pink candle. That doesn't look good. <laughs> this might work if I put that. Mm, You know what? I'm not loving. I'm not loving my options here. I just want this back. The background. And then make a, a couple of image adjustments just to enhance the brightness with the contrast. Let's up the color saturation. And mm, maybe nothing with the brightness there. Uh, highlights? Nope. Shadows? There's not really a lot of shadow here to be working with. The, all right. I'm liking this. And then another one of my little hacks for these designs when I'm creating these designs is when I want like a bubble type um, a, a bubble type I know, element to be involved. I just always use clouds um, because I like the, the like whimsical soft edges that it provides rather than like hard lines of, um, that can come from, you know, using just like a straight rectangular background element or background element. Um, I like this a lot. I want there to be a little bit more, um, more kind of, uh, texture on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, cl this cloud smaller, put it to the back, copy, and you can see that it, my ridges are becoming less like defined as they were, um, Let's do one more on this side over here. So like there's a lot of elements at work, but it looks like one big element. And then, oops, last but not least, I'm going to unhighlight, I hi highlighted everything here, but I'm actually, I want to unhighlight, and I'm using the shift key to do that. Um, so I can move the white down to be less um, uh, encroaching on my book covers. Let's make them, let's see if we bring them closer together. And bigger. There's that. I'm looking, waiting for that middle line to pop up. There it is. Perfect. All right, and now I have a design ready to go um, that I can post. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in Glenmire Wim Mystery for my identifier, and then social post for series, and 
sh share and download. Um, so you can see how, you know, kind of off the cuff, sometimes design creation can be when you, you need a graphic or something inspires you to um, design. Uh, Canva is there with all the tools ready to help you create something to showcase your book, showcase your author brand, um, and really uh, brighten up, engage uh, your audience with the content that you're creating. So hopefully this provided some helpful insight. And as always, if you have any additional questions or would like assistance creating social media graphics for your books, please feel free to reach out to me um, at my website, bookstobundles.com. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.